declare that you are a good God. And you're the same yesterday, today and forever. You were good to us yesterday. You were good to us before all. Surely your goodness and mercy has followed us all the days of our lives. We will dwell in the house of the Lord. Your goodness knows no end. Your goodness has no limit. It shocks us. It surprises us. Even when everyone has given up on us, we are giving up on ourselves. Lord God, your goodness is still there in the end. And you haven't given up on us. Thank you, Lord God, for seeing in us what we did not see. And for calling out of us that which we never knew we had in us.
there are some situations and circumstances that it looks like it has no, it hasn't it's not going to change because it's remained that way for years. But the promises of God always come to pass. And in this time, I feel like God is saying, surely, surely, every word I've spoken to you, every promise I've made, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. The Lord wants to encourage you to look at what He has said and not what you feel. Remember what He has said and not what your circumstances are saying. Remember what He has said and not what your finances or your house or your situation looks like. Remember what He has said and not and what's going on in your family. But in the end, it shall surely come to pass. It shall surely come to pass. It shall surely come to pass. The promises of God are oh yes and amen in Christ. The one thing that God is always watching over, He is always watching over His Word to ensure that it comes to pass. He watches over His Word to perform it. To perform it. Your family will be saved in the end.
before we just transition, can we just be still before God and be open to what He has said and what do you see? What do you say? Be open to what He is speaking to you and what He's showing you right now. Holy Spirit.
And if you know it, I encourage you to shut your eyes and just join in with me. If you don't know it, just listen to the word. You won't worry about putting them up on the screen. Don't worry about that. Just join in if you know it. If you don't, just sit and listen to the words.
because we know what earthly riches won't last. We can't take them with you. But we're destined for eternity. An eternity with God in heaven. That song, that those song, the songs that we sing, and that, that we haven't sung that one for a long time. But there's so much truth, so many riches in the words of the songs that we sing. I really encourage you to think about what you sing. Think about what you're singing when you sing it. It's so easy, especially in songs we sung time and time again. It's easy just to sing it without really thinking what it means or what it means to you. So I encourage you. And I just pray that whatever I say today, already have planned any of that. But I thank God that He's given me the freedom today because I normally, my notes are my kind of security blanket, and, and I'm scared to leave them. But I thank God because it's my, been my desire to, to have more freedom in preaching. And I thank God because already I can see that he's starting to answer that prayer and that desire. I can do all things through Christ. But that song, as many others that we sing, have their roots in scripture. That's why they're so powerful. That song, As the Deer Pants, how many of you can tell me where that actually comes from in the Bible? Psalm 42. Thank you, Lynn. Well done. Exactly right. Psalm 42. It says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? In the Amplified Bible, it says, As the heart pants and longs for the water brooks, so I pant and long for you, O God. In the same way that a deer longs for a refreshing stream, we desire to know God intimately. As on a hot day, Knowing about a glass of water, knowing that we can open the tap and take a drink, that does nothing to quench your thirst. In the same way that just knowing about God won't satisfy you. You have to drink. You actually have to take the water. And you have to drink it for it to quench your thirst. In the same way. We have to experience God. Right. We have to get to know Him intimately. Mm -hmm. He alone can satisfy our deepest needs. You won't find your deepest needs satisfied in any earthly relationship. However good your relationships are with other people, even between husband and wife, they can never completely fulfil your longings and your desires. As humans, we always let people down, no matter what our good intentions are. God alone can satisfy your deepest needs. He can satisfy your deepest longings. Because he's your creator. He knows you like no one else in the world. David in Psalm 63 writes, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. David wrote that in the wilderness. So, in the same way that physically his body was dry, and he needed water, he needed sustenance. But in the same way, you recognise that he needed God. He needed the Spirit of God to sustain him and to refresh him. I don't know about you, if you've been a Christian for any 
length of time, you probably have experienced what we often refer to as wilderness times, seasons of wilderness, where it's been dry, where it's been hard, where it's felt like God isn't answering prayer, where it's felt like your life has been unfruitful. I felt the same. I felt times when my prayer life has been hard work, it's been effective, it's been dry. Within those wilderness times, there have been occasional oases, or oases is. It's a bit of water in the middle of the desert. Yes. My Christian life, a lot of the time, has been like a wilderness, but with the occasional oasis for refreshing. But I don't know about you, I want to live permanently in that oasis. Where the living water that Jesus said, Jesus is the living water, and he said in, uh, wasn't it in John, John 30, chapter 7, verse 37, he says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from him. I don't know about you, but I want those streams of living water to flow in and through me all the time. Yeah. Not just some of the time, but all of the time. I know I've got a way to go, but I know with God is possible. Do you want that? Last week, pastor preached on the verse of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, verse, verse 15. Do not get drunk on wine but be filled with the Spirit. And I believe Lorraine also during the week, I remember her quoting that very same scripture, I can't remember where it was, or Stanley was somewhere, Ladies Fellowship. Lorraine had had that very, that very same verse, do not get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And Pastor spoke about that last Sunday. I believe God is wanting to speak to us. He wants us to drink of His Spirit. And how do we do that? By spending time in his presence. By waiting on him. By putting aside those distractions that keep coming up against us. And I know I've been battling with distractions on and off for a very long time now. By putting aside those distractions. Carving out time to be with God. Undisturbed time with God. Times of fellowship. But even when you're not shutting your prayer room in your closet away from God. We can have unbroken communion with him. I'm reminded of what's his name, Pastor Lawrence, Brother Lawrence. He would he, he worked in the monastery and he, he, he worked in the kitchens. And he just had such an amazing walk with God, such a close walk with God. And and he would do everything for the love of God. Everything he did, no matter how small, he did for God. And he wrote in his book how he would um, make his little omelette in the pan. And after making his omelette, he would like prostrate on the floor, thanking God that he had enabled him to make that omelette. We can go about with God throughout our day, having friendship with him. Right. We also need to spend time meditating. And his word. Spending time worshipping, worshipping, listening to worship music, immersing ourselves in the presence of God. I want those streams of living water never to run dry, to be a constant flow. But in order to do that, we need to keep drinking. Think about it. We all need water. Our body is made up of what percentage of water, Dave? 70, 75 percent water. We need water to live. And if we don't drink water, we will die. And it's not enough to drink water once a week, even once a day. We have to drink it throughout the day. We say we're supposed to have eight pints of water or something a day. That's what they say, I think. We need to keep drinking. It's the same with God's Spirit. It's not enough just to have 
one filling every now and then. We need to keep drinking daily of his spirit. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to move on. Whether that's in your own private times with God, whether it's in corporate worship, don't you just love the times when God's presence comes, where there's, there's a just his manifest presence, you can tell something's different. I don't know about you, but I don't want to move out of those moments. I don't want to move on. And I think sometimes in, in our busy lives, and I think we're worse than in the Western world than in many other countries for this. Life is rush, 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 work, 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 moving on from one thing to another, and I know I'm guilty of that. Sometimes we need to slow down. Right. Not be in a hurry. We sing that song, and I know Dave likes that song. Not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry to move on because when we when we move on too quickly, sometimes we miss what God is wanting to say to us. It's very easy to do. And you know, some of those times when we think God isn't speaking, it's not that He's not speaking or He doesn't want to speak. It's because we haven't stopped long enough to listen. Or we haven't quieted all those other voices that have been in our ears. We need to be still. As we sang about the wedding this morning, please stand up and now. I don't know about you, but I've never regretted the times that I've taken to be with God. I mean, there's times when, yeah. You know you connected with me. Let's just go back to Psalm 42. Because it would seem that when this psalm was written by the sons of Korah, who were musicians, I'm sure many of you know that these psalms, they were songs or poems. They were often written to music, and that's why so many of these psalms have been used in worship songs over the years. But in verse 5, the psalmist writes, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise you, my Savior and my God. Now this psalmist, would appear that maybe he's struggling with some sort of depression, difficult thoughts. Discouragement always destroys hope. And the devil always tries to discourage us as Christians. Because without hope, we're tempted to give up. And that's exactly what the devil wants us to do. If he can't stop us from becoming Christians in the first place. He wants to discourage us so that we give up. We don't fulfill our destiny. We don't become all that God wants us to be in our lives. And when we become discouraged and tempted to give up, we begin to become ineffective in our Christian lives. That's the devil's scheme. That's the devil's work. So, what the psalmist does here, he's asking himself a question. Why are you done cast? Why do I feel like this? And it's a good thing to do if you're, if you're feeling like that sometimes. Ask yourself a question. What are you thinking or what have you been thinking about? Because more often than not, our thoughts have been negative. We've been allowing ourselves to dwell on negative thoughts. I can't do this. It's too hard. I know, I've 
about every time when I'm due to come up to preach. I battle with that. This week has been no different to any other time. A voice in my head saying, you can't do that. You're not going to know what to say. No. You won't be prepared. You might be saying to yourself, why does this always happen to me? Nothing ever changes. You pick that up in your, your prof prophecy during the worship. You might be thinking, it's not fair. God, God perhaps isn't answering my prayers because he's disappointed in me. I've let him down. I always let people down. I'll never see God I'm useless. I'm not like Even in the natural, 
You think about bodybuilders, athletes, what they go through to train their bodies to be better. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's hard work. It's commitment. It can be painful sometimes. God says, says in scripture that in this world you will have trouble. But take heart because I've overcome the world. I remember, I'm glad you're here today, Lynn. I wanted to um, just remember something that you said once a very, very long time ago. It's always stayed with me, Lynn. Uh, it was a ladies' fellowship. Um, I don't remember how long ago it was, but it was in the days of Jenny Kavanagh and Nick Seal. In fact, I think this particular ladies' fellowship, we were in Nick Seal's house. And Lynn gave a message. And she spoke about a rose being crushed. And it's in the crushing that the rose releases its perfumed oil. That beautiful, that beautiful smell that's created by rose oil. But that rose has to be crushed in order to release that oil. Now often the most powerful messages come out of the most painful experiences. And you know, some of the, yeah, some of the most powerful messages that are preached up here, if they come with weight, if they come with meaning, then you can bet that the person that brought that message has been through something to get that message to you. That song that we sing, New Wine, it says, in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4 says, consider, we've had this verse many times before, but I'm going to read it again. Consider it through joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. As you know, the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So, actually what that tells me, and I had this, this revelation some time ago, there's something I need to be reminded of again and again, that it's not just a question of praising God and thanking God in spite of of our circumstances and what we're going through. But because this scripture shows us that we can actually thank God even for what we're going through. Because it is achieving in us maturity, it's achieving in us perseverance that we need. So we can actually even thank God for the troubles that come in our way. To say, thank you God, I know that you are turning this thing around, I know that you are working this for good. I know that you are doing something in me. If you don't know what it is, you say, God, what do you want to teach me through this? What do you want to show me? And very often, once God has done what he wants to do in you, then often the circumstances themselves actually change. And remember also that our troubles are temporary. They are all parts. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Another scripture came from mine this morning as I prayed just before I came out. And I think maybe you will draw to a close with, with these scriptures. Because I know we're going to have a little bit more worship and it's an evangelical close. With no sort of stuff. I don't know how many of you have had a, had a difficult week. I know I've had one challenge after another thrown at me. But God wants to give us his peace. I have a group. A WhatsApp group with some of my old school friends, some are Christians, some aren't. But we share on the group about things that are going on and 
some of them say, oh, please pray for this. Others say, oh, I'm praying for that. It's quite open, even though not everyone's there a Christian. But this week, there were ten of us in that group, and this week, three of the parents, I mean, we're in that age group now, where the parents are um, quite elderly. Either they, they've passed on, or if they are still here on earth, uh, they're getting quite old and frail. So we are in that age group now. But out of those ten people, three have parents who have been in hospital this week. And another one, she herself, was in hospital this week. So that's four out of ten. And my mum had a fall this week. Praise God she's okay. But actually, had I not been there to catch her, she would have had many more on other occasions during, during this, this very week. So we have troubles, we have challenges in this world. But God wants to give us his peace through it all. Let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And Colossians 3, verse 15 to 16 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish, admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your heart to God. Be blessed this week, whatever the week throws at you. Be blessed, be at peace. Know that God is there for you. He's with you. He's an overcomer. And so are you. Amen. Well, the Lord, so I will do that today. Uh, probably just give us some time for eating, and then, and then we, can, we can go into the other room like usual. And last but not least, um, I would just like to remind people about the advent calendars. So, if you are interested and you would like to sign up for uh, an advent calendar, please, there's a sign up sheet here. And so, yeah, please get involved if you're interested in that. And for those of you who are, ah, for those of you who are, please, um, I'm getting my myself. For those of you who have not yet, or may, for those of you that might be interested in being baptised, but perhaps you haven't said anything, please come see myself or Elena, and we can arrange something for you. Is Joshua here? Joshua! We're going to finish singing a song. I, I have been told that it's someone's birthday this week. I just announced on the 28th of October there's a ladies' fellowship at my house. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to appreciate the October. So uh, just so that you, all the ladies, uh, what bothers you tell us that we know is the 28th of October, ladies' fellowship. Okay, where's well, Joshua? Mm -hmm. Alright, hey. So how are they going to be this week? Nine. Nine? Nine. So, so you're becoming a young man. Sorry. Uh, enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. Okay, we're going to say happy birthday to Joshua. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Joshua. Happy birthday to you. Is anyone else's birthday this week? Oh, it's okay. Brilliant. Please come to the front. Yes, you can't escape us. Ah. Come on. So, uh, I guess it was it. 21 with a few experience. <laughs> 
right? Leaving 21 with a few years experience. <laughs> Alright, I'll do it again with Angela. And uh, one, two, three. Happy birthday to Last week, 